Welcome back everyone. And today we're gonna to be messing around with the Radio Code 103. And this is in fact a sponsored video, but for a good reason. I only take sponsorships if it's an actually good product. And this right here is an amazing product. Why? Because this isn't just an ordinary Geiger counter. This device right here is a pocket gamma spectrometer. So what is a gamma spectrometer and what does it do? Well, compared to a normal Geiger counter, a normal Geiger counter is very black and white. It only detects if there is an incident of radiation or if there's not, right? But this right here can measure the energy of that radiation. And that can tell you a lot of information such as what is emitting the radiation and we can even use it to identify elements. So let's get into it and I'm gonna show you guys some of the awesome features and what you can do with this device. Okay, so here's the radio code itself. You can see right here is our counts per minute. We're reading background about 122. Over here even gives a plus minus percentage of the accuracy of this number here, which is 8.7% variation we could have in this. And pretty much this thing, which is really cool, the size of it is first very small, which is Super convenient if you want to just like put it in your pocket. This is what I've done. You just put it in your pocket and then you can access everything from the mobile app. And also on the topic of carrying it around, they also gave me this leg band that you can get so you can keep it on your foot. And then again, you can access everything through your phone and uh, see what this is reading down near the ground. And they also provided this carrying case just to protect it because I have dropped this thing a couple times. It is pretty strong on its own. Um, but if you don't want to mess up your plastic casing, then best to get something like this to hold it. Anyway. So I can go into this and I can look at the gamma spectrum. So there's just our background. As you can see, I can change my zoom on there by using these. So pretty cool. And then you hold down the button again, you can choose dose, right? So that'll give us our microsieverts over a certain amount of time. So I've gotten 50 microsieverts over 23 days. I've also exposed this thing to lots of radiation. And then here you can also do monitor and then we can change from counts per minutes to microsieverts and then in the settings back in that one menu you can change all kinds of other things you want counts per second or you know millirem per hour things like that so that's kind of the basic features you can access to the lcd screen here but this device really shines when it's connected to a mobile phone or a computer so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what this is like on the mobile phone app so the app icon is this little radioactivity symbol and going into the app you see we are met with a bunch of different options so one of the first options we have here is just the radiation levels this tells you the dose rate and the counts per second and that's giving you an updated graph Another cool thing you can do is also just view the overall dose over a certain amount of time and you can reset that at any moment and then get a new accumulation of dose over time. And then you can also view the spectrum here. So this is a bit more in depth than what the LCD screen shows. You can, you know, pull up your isotope identification and really look at your spectrum there which makes it super convenient. Um, you can just access this straight from your phone while the device is sitting in your pocket. Another cool option is the tracking option. So this uses your phone's GPS and also correlates that with the counts per second. So looking around, you can actually get a map of where you've been and the radiation levels. So zooming in here on the USF campus, you can check out and see exactly where I've been and all the radiation levels of the various places. And another section over here down by this Bartow area, yeah. Um, down here they do a lot of phosphate mining and a lot of the phosphate byproducts contain thorium so driving through some of these areas you can see the radiation spikes pretty considerably it gets up to nine counts per second here and so yeah that's kind of the key features of the mobile app the android this is for iphone the android one is a bit better they are still working on updating the iphone app but you can see there's a lot of features down at the bottom there that uh they're still working on. But yeah, overall it's still pretty useful and it gives you all the uh, basic information that you want. So let's take some radiation measurements with this thing and actually identify what is emitting the radiation. Okay, now I got the desktop app open and this right here is our gamma spectrometer function. So this is showing us energies of all the radiation is collected over a couple days. This is mainly just background. You can see most of background energy though is around 79 kilo electron volts, which it tells you up there. So let's go ahead and figure out what this is so this is radioactive as you can see by the increase in ticks what is giving it that radioactivity well the best way to find out is to use this so what i'm going to do is just press restart and now it's collecting all the new energy levels from this so you can see up to 549 counts per minute and now we just gotta let this collect okay so we are only three minutes and 16 seconds in and we're already gathering a decent spectrum here. So over time, this can get even better, but let's go ahead and look and figure out what this is. We'll highlight, say this peak right here. Okay, and now 
we have highlights on all of these peaks, right? These lines are all matching up with the peaks that we see. And it is saying that that is from radium 226, which that is a radium clock. But you can see the program has its own isotope library and it you know, kind of automatically gives you its best guess. And you just gotta make sure that whatever you're on, right, all the lines line up. So this right here, it's not a luthenium, I think it is. 177 because we don't have alignment on any peaks and again some out here where it's not really showing any peaks over time you would see a peak out here you just really need to give it time for it to to build that spectrum because it's not emitting very many gamma rays at these energies so it's going to take a while for that to build okay and now i got this circuit board with the suspicious thing on it so let's see what that is it is indeed radioactive it's actually very radioactive Seven thousand counts per minute roughly and climbing. Let's go ahead and run our spectrum on it and figure out what that is. Okay, and only at 54 seconds in, we can clearly see that this is americium 241. Anyway, so at these lower energies, it's not exactly calibrated perfectly for these lower energies, right? Because you, you want a good calibration for all of them. So on the lower end, it is a very slightly miscalculated, but not to any big extent where you truly have to worry about not being able to identify something. Um, you can recalibrate this, um, but if you recalibrate it for a lower energy, you know, then your higher energies are also gonna be miscalculated. Well, this is americium 241 from a uh, smoke detector. Figured out what that is. Also, yes, I'm having it connected to the computer the whole time, but you can disconnect this from the computer, measure your sample, and then come back and connect it, and it'll give you the spectrum from it. And then you can also do it from the app too. Okay, now let's give it a test on these photographs here. These are photographs of x-rays, but they're a very special kind. And as you'll be able to see, they are radioactive. So after six minutes, because this is only like 30 counts above background, not very radioactive, the background radiation is building a spectrum, so it's harder to identify the peaks. But if we go through here, you see uranium-235 has good alignment. This right here doesn't really show a peak, but again, that's due to us not subtracting background. But we can see this is uranium-235 because these are uranium photographs called uranotyping. So since the last uranium photographs didn't work the best, let's go ahead and do something with a bit more uranium in it and now only 48 seconds in we can 100 clearly see that this is uranium 235 now so we have that peak down there which we didn't originally see and now this has divided into two individual peaks lining up pretty much perfectly with our uranium 235 so yeah there you go there's how you identify radioactive elements using the radio code 103 and you can see you don't really need that much time if the object is fairly radioactive and if you have a background subtracting on top of this it can actually be very quick, but over time you will gain better spectra as you let it gather more data. And the radio code can also test for food contamination. So here we have some dried blueberries and these were grown in the Chernobyl region. So they do contain some radioactive isotopes, but let's go ahead and see if we can detect what radioactive isotopes are in there. And as you can see, we're getting up to 170 counts per minute from these dried blueberries. Over a period of 15 minutes, you can clearly see that we have cesium-137 in our sample. And this is due to the radioactive fallout of Chernobyl. And since cesium-137 has a half-life of, I believe, about 30 years, it can clearly still be detected. So it's pretty awesome that we are still detecting the radioactive isotopes from the Chernobyl explosion. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the lab and do some x-ray for lessons and find out if my gold is real or not. So there's another amazing thing you can do with the Radio Code 103. So one, we did isotope identification, and now we can identify elements. Well, with this, we probably can't identify, but we can confirm if they are what we think they are, right? So I got some bismuth here. I want to confirm if this is bismuth. I got some antimony. I want to confirm if this is antimony. And I got some europium that was suspiciously cheap. Is it europium? Well, we can find out using this. So we're going to do XRF, which stands for X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy. So the idea behind this is, is we have an americium-241 source right here from, some smoke, from a smoke detector. Yeah, I got six more of those bad boys on the way. Nothing suspicious about it, okay? Just a guy ordering six smoke detector sources. Nothing suspicious. It was supposed to be here already. Customs probably seized it on God. And these 60 kilo electron volt gamma rays will hit our sample here and ionize it. So this actually has enough energy to ionize inner electrons around atoms. So this means pretty much it can knock off an inner electron. And an inner electron takes a lot more energy to knock off because it is bound much more strongly. What's going to happen is an electron from higher up is going to drop down to fill that space. Because it needs to drop that energy level, it has to get rid of that energy, right? Conservation of energy. It's going from a higher energy orbital to a lower energy 
orbital in that maneuver is going to produce a photon and it's going to produce pretty much a photon in the energy range of that energy gap those energy gaps happen to be in x-rays when they're from inner electrons so then our radio code 103 can then pick up those x-rays and it knows the energy of the x-rays and such each atom has a set of unique energy levels we can then determine what element is right here by looking at the energy of the x-rays for lessing back. So pretty much I just got this lead plate here so we're not picking up the americium gamma rays and we just kind of pick up the fluorescence off here. So the first thing we need to do is collect a background. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to restart this spectrum and we'll let that collect for 10 minutes and then that will become our background spectra. And then we can use that to subtract from our collected spectrum. Okay, I got it background now. That's what that green line is. It's only over seven minutes, but that's fine. Let's restart it. Yes. And now I'm going to take our chunk of bismuth here. And I'm going to plop that right there. Okay. Well, it's only been four minutes, but I can clearly tell you this is our bismuth peak. You can see our normal background here. We have a peak right here. And this is at 75, 76, 77 kilo electron volts. If we go and look at bismuth transitions right here, then you see we have 74 and 77. That right there is pretty much 74 and 77. So we do in fact have bismuth here. That is a great sign. So yeah, it's not the greatest and clearest peak. Let's uh, try something different. Let's get rid of our bismuth. Let's substitute in some antimony. And we are only two minutes in and this is clearly antimony. So we have a lot over here in the 26, 27-ish range. And if we go and we look at antimony here, you can see we have 26, 26, 29. So right in the 26 range, which is right there. Yeah, that's exactly where we're getting that peak. Look at the normal background it got there. Um, it does line up with the americium, but you know we already got background here, so Look how clearly higher that peak is. So yeah, that is definitely our antimony for lessing. Now I'm gonna restart this another time. We're gonna trade out our antimony for some europium. This is a much smaller sample, so probably gonna be a lot worse for lessons. There's not as much for it to hit and bounce back. See what we get. Again, we're only two minutes in, and I can tell you this is a europium because we're getting, see how this is getting pushed over. Well, europium emits at around 40, 41 kilo electron volts, which is right here. And that's why these two peaks, this normal peak here is kind of merging with our europium peak. Um, so yeah, but yeah, you can see clearly background, how that is clearly different. We're getting a lot of really low energy stuff over here, like seven and six kilo electron volts. I don't know what that is. One more thing I'm testing is this one ounce of gold. So, you know, is this actually gold or do we get scammed? We'll find out. We'll find out here soon. Okay, no question of a doubt. That is gold. <laughs> 68, 66 kilo electron volts. It's this peak right here. Dude, let's see if we can detect the silver in silver nitrate. What was great about this, it goes through plastic. That is the cool part. Yeah, that's a nice silver peak right there. Oh yeah, it's clear as day detecting the silver. That is awesome. So there is a silver in our silver nitrate. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta do a little bit more. Let's do some, some cadmium here. Man, look at that clean cadmium peak. Clearly cadmium. Let's do um, some tellurium. I know another weird element. One of those elements you don't really hear much from. I think we already found our tellurium and we are 12 seconds in. It's exactly what we'd expect from tellurium because its transition is at, at 30 kilo electron volts minus three, that's 27. So that should be exactly what we're expecting. Oh, what is these two peaks right here? What, at 85 and 80? Is tellurium radioactive? I don't know what that is. Um, it just must contain some radioactive isotope. Anyway, I mean, we can clearly see our x-ray for less than peak right here. So no clue what that peak is, but yeah. Well, that wraps up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. That is the Radio Code 103. Definitely get yourself one of these devices. Check them out. Links down in all the descriptions. And um, get one for yourself, and you can do a lot of fun things with it. So if you're a nerd like me, this is the perfect device for you because you can do so much cool stuff with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.